You never know what's going to come out of our mouths. Chickadee, welcome to Two Real Chicks. How are you doing today? I'm Carla. I'm Cindy. And we are so happy that you're with us today. Happy day. Happy day. We love spending time with you. And we love when you send us questions, when you make comments. We are very new to YouTube. What are we, four months old? Four months old, five months old, something like that. December to January, January to February, February to March, March to April, April to May. Oh my gosh, we are almost six months old. And we realized the other day through some of the questions that we've been getting that we really have never fully introduced ourselves to you. So we thought we would play 20 questions. These are some of the questions that we get asked most often. We have not rehearsed our answers. This is as real chick as it gets. The biggest question that we get is how long have you two been friends? God created <laughs> the heavens and the earth. The skies opened up, the angels sang, and two women became friends. Somewhere around 23 years that we have been best friends. We met when we were five. That makes us what, 28? Yeah, 28, 28 and 29. Yeah. What's your real job? I am a project manager and I work in the HVAC industry. She also is a business owner of several businesses. Go ahead. Don't sell yourself short. She owns several very successful businesses. We do lawn greetings. We put storks out in people's yard. We put flamingos in for birthday celebrations. Shameless plug, storksandmoreva.com and FlamingoNightmares.com Have you ever gone by the house of somebody who has a new baby and there's a big old stork in the front yard? That's her! Well, actually, I make my husband do it. You and I did one together yeah, one we've time. Yeah, we've done a few yards together. We have done a few storks together, and those suckers are heavy. What is your real job? My real job is I am a professional television and radio broadcaster. I'm a talk show host and a news anchor, and I've been doing that for <clears throat> years. And there's another thing that I do that a lot of people don't know about. I am a licensed professional auctioneer. Which one of us is more likely to bungee jump, zip line, or skydive? You fibber! You total fibber! I would. I totally would. Honey, no. No, no. That's what elevators are for. Skydiving is the waste of a perfectly good airplane. The only thing I want to do in an airplane is sit in first class. What's on your bucket list? Ireland. To me, Ireland is just a, a magic fairy tale land. I've been to England and Scotland, and I absolutely love Scotland, but Ireland is on my bucket list. Because once I finish this weight loss journey and my physical therapy journey, I'm going to get there. She will do it. What's on your bucket list? I want to go way up north, through Canada. What at Greenland? Is it Greenland? You want me to know geography? You're the newscaster. I'm a blonde. I want to see the night sky oh the northern lights the that's northern what you lights. want to see aurora borealis i want to see that and i would actually stay in one of them glass things we should do that together i would do that with you i would totally do that would you do ireland with me yeah okay deal solve that problem what's your favorite store makeup wise it's either ulta or target Regular stores, I have to think for a minute. Amazon. <laughs> kind of is. <laughs> it comes right to you. I'm a Prime member. I paid for that. Amazon. My favorite store would probably be Macy's. Because where else can you go in, get a full makeover, find a ball gown, a new bra, and on your way out the door, get a set of sheets and towels? <laughs> True that. I love me some Macy's. Your favorite sports like football but you're an athlete yourself yeah i like i like running i like cycling and your favorite sport sports sports is that one of those things where guys run around playing with their balls no the super bowl is nothing but guys running around playing and fighting over their balls it's also a good time to have a party <laughs> that's my favorite part about super bowl sunday party the party what got you into makeup and skincare? 
Well, actually, my mother got me into makeup and skincare. When I turned 13 years old, my mother decided it was time for me to wear makeup. And she said, if she's going to do it, I want her to have the good stuff, and I want her to know how to do it right. So she marched me into the nearest Meryl Norman store and said, hook her up. So they totally did. I got the whole skincare regime for teenage skin, and I also got makeup that was appropriate for a 13-year-old girl. Nothing too dark, but I did start wearing foundation at that time. What's interesting is my mother would not let me wear mascara. I was not allowed to wear mascara until I was 18, which my eyes are the least prominent feature that I have. They need makeup the most but she would not let me wear a mascara. My mother was a depression era child. She was born in the 1930s, she's 84 years old. My father was born in 1921. So I don't know if mascara kind of had a hint of a lady of the evening type thing Possibly. for that generation, but no mascara allowed. No super dark eyeshadow, but I loved my Meryl Norman makeup, and I was Meryl Norman loyal until I was well into my 30s, and then I tried some other brands like Bare Minerals and that kind of thing. I was a makeup snob for a long time. I really, really was. The idea of using a drugstore makeup, poo-pooed it stuck up my nose. I still love Meryl Norman. I think it's one of the finest brands out there. I think it's incredibly underrated. I hate that it has kind of declined in popularity over mm -hmm. the years, but I will always be a Meryl Norman girl at heart. I like to call it my Merle Haggard face. <laughs> so that's what got me into makeup. What kept me in makeup was actually my career. In television, you have to know how to do makeup. So I am not a professional makeup artist, but I was actually trained by a lot of professional makeup artists because I've done national work with Fox News television, and I always had a makeup artist, but I was always get them to teach me how to do the tricks so that I could do them on my own. I've had to wear a lot of makeup in my career. What got you into makeup? YouTube. And me. And Carla. Because if something's too dark for me, I go, here, uh -huh. you take it. I this would it. look really good on you. Yeah, but you're very much more into skincare. Yes. You're very loyal with skincare. So you may not wear as much makeup as mm -hmm. I do, but you're much more of a skincare guru. I'm a little snob. You have such beautiful tan skin, though. And your eyes are these big beautiful eyes. Look how when she bats her eyes. You don't need it like I do. Thank you, darling. I am fighting that aging thing. I am not going down with that fight. We might have to age, but we don't have to like it. And we don't have to let it take over. Just saying. Your favorite movie. That's a tough one. My favorite movie. It's old. I freaking love this movie. Yours, mine, and ours with Lucille Ball. That I is love that movie. Favorite movie ever. That is an adorable movie. It is. I love Lucille Ball. I do. She was just phenomenal. When she was getting her makeup, she was going out on her date and those eyelashes were falling into her drink. Oh my God. I, I don't have to watch that movie for that because that happens to me on a daily basis when I try to put on eyelashes. My favorite movie, that's a really tough one for me because it really depends on the mood that I'm in. Gosh, I love anything with Jimmy Stewart in it. Jimmy Stewart can do no wrong. Big fan of the Alfred Hitchcock movie with Jimmy Stewart in it called Rear Window. Had Grace Kelly and Jimmy Stewart in it. It was just a very elegant, very, it was a suspense movie, but it wasn't scary. I'm a Steel Magnolias fan. Yes. I love Gone with the Wind. I love Forrest Gump. I love Field of Dreams. I've never seen Gone with the Wind. You, girl, girl. I've never seen it. I got to hook you up. I've never seen it. Okay, we're going to have a movie night soon. Okay. I even saw Gone with the Wind on the big screen. They had a special anniversary showing in a very, very, very old historic movie theater. And all of the patrons had to dress up in period costume. Wow. And I did. Of course, at this time, I was a size two. That was super cool. We're going to get you to see Gone with the Wind. I love classics. I love feel-good movies. I even love sports movies because they have such a beautiful message they do. to them. They do. I, I just love anything that makes you feel something, whether it's suspense or whether it's excitement or whether it's love or compassion or the belief in the triumph of the human spirit. I love movies that make you feel something. That and Sex in the City. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> we can quote every line of both Sex and the City movies, and there's a rumor of Sex and the City 3, 
Hurry up and put it out already. We're dying over here. Another biggest question that we get, how old are you? And we also get asked if we're sisters. How old are you? I just turned 60. She is 60 and sassy. I am pushing 50. 50 is the new 30. Okay, are you named after anyone? My middle name is the same as my mother's middle name, and my first daughter's middle name is the same as well. I am also named after someone. I'm named after my father, Carl, so I'm Carla. What do you order at Starbucks? Venti Skinny Vanilla Latte. The skinny part totally goes out the window when I order the pumpkin bread on the side. <laughs> I order the peppermint mocha at Christmas. I don't go to Starbucks very often, but when I do, I'll meet my daughter or something there. I like to get mocha and I'll get the grande. Oh, I always get the venti. If you're gonna go to Starbucks, get the venti. And I ask for skinny, you know, just for the low fat milk and then ask for whipped cream. Oh, that makes sense. That's like eating a salad and having a Snickers. Okay. And a Diet Coke. Favorite thing to do when you get upset. I will either find anything in the kitchen I can eat. I don't often cry. I'm not a crier. Mm -mm. I will pace, but I eat a lot. I don't want anything healthy. I mean, she cusses too. I don't have to be upset for that. <laughs> I, I could put a sailor to shame. I mean, I would embarrass a sailor. I accidentally dropped the F-bomb in front of my mother once. Like, no! I said, Mom, I'm so sorry, it just slipped out. She didn't slap you to next Christmas? No, she giggled. I don't know that I have a favorite. I mean, do you really, really have a favorite thing to do when we're upset? I mean, when you're upset, you're upset. Nothing is, is a favorite thing to do at that point. But the thing that I do the most often is cry. Because I actually do feel better after I cry. I'm a very emotional person. I cry when I'm happy. I cry when I'm sad. I cry when I'm frustrated. I, I cry when I'm concerned. If I'm very, very, very upset, I'm most likely to cry and then go eat a gallon of salted caramel ice cream. Ooh, that sounds good. Dr. Joyce Brothers. Remember Dr. Does anybody remember Dr. Joyce Brothers? Long before there was Dr. Phil, there was Dr. Joyce Brothers. Dr. Joyce Brothers, she was awesome. But I saw her on a talk show one time and she said, do not be ashamed of crying and do not be fearful of crying because when you cry, and recently a university study backed this up, when you cry, there is a toxin in your body that has built up that needs to escape. I believe she said it was a stress hormone, but don't quote me on that. But there's a toxin in your body that has built up and the only way that it can escape is through the tear ducts of your eyes. Wow. That is why it is scientifically proven that you do indeed feel better after what they call a good cry because that toxin has left your body and that's why you feel relief. I don't cry right away. If the building blew up tomorrow, I'd be saving everybody as would she. The two of us are the, the getter dunners. We're the doers. And then we fall apart later mm -hmm. with each other. With ice cream and potato chips. Do we have any? What's your favorite music to listen to? Hip hop, rap, boom, boom. What about I that? hate answering this question because I have everything in my collection from George Jones to Beethoven. So. I would say my favorite thing to listen to on a regular basis in the car, if I'm not listening to talk radio or news, is country music because I like the stories that it tells. But my absolute favorite all-time piece of music is a classical piece of music, and that is Paco Bell's Canon in D. My favorite piece of music ever written is classical music, but when I'm driving down the road, I got me some country going on. She does, she does. If you were to put my phone on shuffle, you might have some serious rap music followed by some gospel. She's got the F-bomb dropping in the, in the rap Glory, song. Hallelujah. And then they're talking about coming to Jesus in the next song. They were saying Jesus in the rap song too, but not in the good not way. Not in the good way. When you were a child, what did you want to be when you grew up? An airline stewardess or a model. I wanted to be a lot of things. I wanted to be Miss America. I went as that for Halloween, I don't know how many times. At one point I wanted to be a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. And you don't even like sports. Yeah, but that wasn't sports. That was looking pretty in a cute little costume. True that, true that. <laughs> 
actually, by the time I was a teenager, I knew I wanted to be in broadcast journalism. By the time I was 16, I knew that I wanted to be a serious broadcaster and that I wanted to do things, whether it was a talk show or a news story, I wanted to do things that somehow touched people and somehow made a difference. And I'd like to think that somewhere in the 25 years of my career, that maybe, just maybe, I've done that a couple of times. I know you have. Okay, the next question is, are either of you sarcastic? Us? Are you kidding me? Sarcastic? Us? No! What a kind of question is that? I just don't get it. You gotta be kidding. Okay, if you could only use one makeup item, only one, what would it be? Mascara. Red lipstick. What one accessory can you not live without? Is a purse considered an accessory or is it considered an article of clothing? It's an accessory. Oh man, cause see, I don't go anywhere without my purse. And I was going to say silver hoop earrings because I always have on hoop earrings. So if I'm on a deserted island and I can only take one accessory with me for the rest of my life and a handbag counts, okay, it's a purse. I have to have it. And I'll put my hoop earrings inside the purse. There you go. My one accessory, my phone. That's not an accessory, that's a gadget. Oh, cool. What accessory could that be? This. Yeah, my watch. It goes with my phone. Exactly, that's why. We also get asked an awful lot, are you married? The answer is yes, yes. but not to each other. Do you have children or grandchildren? Yes. My oldest is Lindsay. Lindsay is 35 and she has two boys, uh, Jackson and Russell. Poor little Jackson, since he was, I believe, two, has been dealing with juvenile diabetes. He's a type one. Bless her little heart. She is on task with that. Blair has a little boy and a girl. Let's see, Blair's five years younger than Lindsay, so that makes her 30. 30. Like I said, she has a boy and a girl. So cute, so cute. And she is um, exploring homeschooling. And then we have Malia, who's nine years old, and let me tell you, that child's a hot mess. Diva in the making. Absolutely. All children are beautiful. All children are special in their own way. But some just have a certain spark, and your girls have that. Thank you. Do I have children? I have hers. <laughs> I have never given birth, but I am lucky enough to have several young ladies who call me mama. My first two girls were your oldest two girls, mm -hmm. and her youngest calls me Auntie Carla, and then I have a few other young ladies. I used to send care packages to soldiers in Iraq and Afghanistan serving in the war on terror, and I met some wonderful young women who did not have mothers of their own or who were abandoned by their mothers or for whatever circumstances did not have family to send them care packages or to love on them and to thank them for serving our country. So I have a few young ladies from the War on Terror who still to this day call me Mama Carla or Mama CC, and I'm very honored that they do that. And so these are my kids. So I have, what do I have? I have at least, I probably have at least 10 kids. At least, at least, and you look great. And no stretch marks. Final question. Which one of you has a tattoo and the most piercings? Is it me? Is it her? Me. It's her. Now, the only thing pierced on me are my ears. I do have three holes in my ears, but I only wear the bottom hole. I don't wear the top two. She, on the other hand. I got two holes in each ear. Uh-huh. And? I got a little thing going in my nose. And? We don't talk about that We one. don't talk about the other piercing. And what have you got here? A little tattoo. Mm -hmm. It's faded. It's supposed to be a flower. Now it looks like a bunny rabbit. I thought rabbit. it was a butterfly. No. It's, but it does look like a bunny rabbit now. It looks like a bunny <laughs> rabbit now. <laughs> First time I saw it, she had on a really low tank top. And I'm like, what is that, a bunny? She goes, it's a flower. I'm like, whoops. I have no tattoos, but I keep saying, though, when I lose weight, not if, but when I lose weight, I am going to get a daggone belly button ring. We're going together. I am going to get that navel pierced. And my mother, bless her heart, 84 years old, goes, what do you want that for? Nobody's going to see it. It's a thing I want for do do. me. I don't care if I'm 65 when it finally happens. I'm getting that navel pierced daggone it because I'm going to lose that weight. Yes, you will. I'll be right there beside you. 
Does it hurt? Yes. Have you had one? Yes. If anybody's had one, please let me know what the pain level is going to be like. You can get some lidocaine and put on it. Oh, yeah. That's like sticking a Band-Aid when you need a tourniquet. Well, you know. Yeah, that's like putting numbing gel when you're having a baby. Well, you're right. I about kicked myself <laughs> off the table at one point. So that is just a little bit about us. If you have any questions, let us know. Tell us in the comment section below. We'll be glad to answer them or we'll be glad to do another video. If you have questions, we'll be glad to do a Q&A. You can even leave us questions on our Facebook page, which is Two Real Chicks, or you can message us on Instagram or Twitter, Two Real Chicks on both of those. Comment in the section below. We'll take those questions as well. That would be fun to do a Q&A video from yeah. you. So if you've got questions, just keep them coming. We'll keep a tally and we'll do a Q&A just for you. Absolutely. We always enjoy time spent with you. It always makes our day that much more special when you keep us company. So thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. We also appreciate you watching and we appreciate you giving this video a thumbs up. And there's something else we would greatly appreciate, if you would for us, please. Would you please push that little red button and subscribe? It would mean so much to us. And while you're down there at that little subscribe button, if you'll hit that bell, that way you will be notified every time we upload a new video. YouTube has changed the way they work things, so you won't get notified unless you specifically hit that bell. Just hitting the subscribe button alone doesn't do it. So please go ahead and hit that bell while you're down there. Bing, bing, bing. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Carla. I'm Cindy. We're two real chicks. Mwah. We love Bye. you. Bye. Go night night. Jesus. Do a rip. Do a rip. All right. Let's see if I can do it. And what are you going to give for it? Have a 10, 10, 10. What do you give? 10, don't give 10. You give 10, 10, 10. And 20, 20. Don't give 20. What do 20? And 20. I got a $20 bill. We got 50, 50. Who's going to give me a $50 bill? All in all done. Sold your way for a $50 bill. I'm hot flashing. I know. Merle Norman. Don't get technical on me.